Hello and welcome to this lesson on using Android Studio and creating a Hello World application. Let's start by creating our first application. We open Android Studio and as long as a previous project was not left open, we should see this welcome screen. If you have already created a project and it was not closed on the last run of Android Studio, then you may have opened into that project. Don't worry, just select the file menu and then close project and you should be shown the welcome screen. In the welcome screen we want to select the new project option. This first screen allows us to define the basic parameters for our application. In this screen we'll define our application name. Let's call it example app. As we change the application name you can notice that the package name and project location are automatically changed as well. The package name for an application is a unique identifier, and no two applications in the Google Play Store can have the same package name. Now let's change the company domain field. This field is also part of the unique identifier in the package name. Let's say that we work for Acme Games. Then we could enter acmegames.com here. Notice that it populates the package name with the reverse name of the company. Don't worry, this is the desired naming convention for the package name. OK, let's click Next. In this screen, we can select what type of project we want to build. An application for phones and tablets, an application for Android TV, or an application for Android Wear or possibly Glass. For this example, we will be building an application for Android phones and tablets. Next to the selection for that type, we can also see the minimum SDK for this application. This means the minimum version of Android the device can be running in order to be able to run our application. If we change this option to, for instance, API level 13, we will see that the text below will notify us of approximately how many devices can run this application based on that version of Android. Let's change the API version back to Ice Cream Sandwich, Android version 4.0 or API 14, and we'll click Next. In this next screen, the Project Creator Guide allows us to create the default main activity for this application. Here we can pick from a variety of template activities, including activities for login screens, map screens, and more. Let's select the blank activity as our starting activity and then we'll click Next. Now we have come to the definitions for the activity that Android Studio will create for us in our new application. This blank activity will be our main activity, so let's call it Main Activity. We see that again, the Create Application tool auto-configures the layout name for this activity and the title according to our activity name. Now we can click Finish and our application will be auto-generated for us. Once the application is created, we can see our project structure viewer on the left and two editors open on the right. One of these is the layout XML for our activity and one is the activity itself. We can select a file by performing a double left mouse click on the file in our project structure view. Let's do that now to select the activity that has been created for us. When we open XML layout in Android Studio, we see that it opens in the optimized WYSIWYG or what you see is what you get editor. Let's reopen our XML for our main activity. From this editor we can easily drag and drop items. and they will be generated into our view. We can also switch back to the text view and edit items in an XML format. Android Studio also has powerful tools for editing and developing the code source files for application. When we open a code file from our main activity that, that is called mainactivity.java 
We can start writing code and the Java editor, Android Studio, will attempt to autocomplete our code for us. For instance, let's try adding a text view. And we see that Android Studio will autocomplete the text view class for us. We'll learn more about variables in future tutorials, but for this example, in order to allow us to see more about debugging our applications, let's call this variable hello text. Now we want to attach this variable to something in our XML layout. Again, we'll cover this material more in future episodes, but let's give this text view an ID of my text view. When we return to our activity, we can set this variable to the text view from our layout by calling the function findViewById and giving the corresponding ID of my text view. Uh oh, Android Studio has informed us that there is an issue with that line of code signified by the squiggly red line beneath that line of code. That is because findViewById returns the view class while our hello text variable is of the text view class. If we click inside the area of that error, we can then use the shortcut Alt Enter, and we see Android Studio suggests that we cast the return item to a text view, and that fixes our issue. Now we want to run our application. We can either connect an actual device to the computer, and run our application on that device through the ADB or Android debug bridge. Or we can start an emulator and run our application on an Android emulator or AVD, which stands for Android Virtual Device. Let's start an emulator by opening our AVD manager. Here we have some emulators which we have previously configured. Let's start the one called Nexus 5. Here we have some configurations where we can resize the screen or wipe previous data. Let's simply launch the emulator. Starting the Android emulator may sometimes take a few minutes, depending on your system configuration and the configurations for your AVDs. Now we can run the app on an emulator that we have started on our computer. We simply need to make sure that the correct module is selected. Let's go back to Android Studio. Here we have the module selector for running an application. If we open this pull down, we see that we only have one option, our app module, which is the module for application. We make sure that is selected, and then we click the play button. This will start the Gradle build for our application. Once that is finished, Android Studio will ask us which device we want to run the application on. We'll select the emulator that we recently started. Now when we jump back to our emulator, we see that Android Studio has uploaded the compiled application and is now running on our emulated device. Now let's try and debug our application through Android Studio. Let's say that we want to verify the value of our text view from earlier. So let's put a breakpoint on the last line of our onCreate method. Just as we did for running our application, let's make sure that the correct module is selected using our drop-down module selector. Now, instead of choosing the play button to run our application, we'll choose the debug option to debug our application. Again, we choose our emulator. Once the application is uploaded and starts running, we see that Android Studio pulls our focus because we have reached our breakpoint. Once in the breakpoint, we can analyze all types of information. Let's select the value returned from our call by find view by ID and evaluate it by using the shortcut Alt and F8. Once in the expression evaluator, 
We can put any type of expression, for instance here, the value returned by our call to find view by ID, and press the evaluate button to get back the value. Here we see that it returns all the information for this text view object. In this case, we only want to see the text that's in the text view. So let's add a method call for get text. We see that autocomplete also works in the expression evaluator. Now when we evaluate this new expression, we get the exact text that was entered in our text view. That concludes our first look in the Android Studio and how to create our first Hello World application. In our next video, we'll cover this section's lab exercise that will allow us to review the material we have learned in these previous lessons.